Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This is going to be a, a big update on where I am with the Omnicell Weldless Battery System. Before I get started on this though, I want to say a massive thanks to everyone that's been commenting on the videos so far with questions, concerns and ideas. These interactions are really, really useful to me. So thank you and please keep them coming. Much of what I'm trying to do here is not to provide some kind of silver bullet or game changing solution, but to open up a genuine conversation about how we use batteries, how we manage the resource and how we reuse and recycle them, as well as deal with concerns like safety. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the testing that I've been doing so far, as well as other things like BMS integration. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to talk about where I want to take this and how I'd like to open it up and make it available for people that are interested in being part of this. So the first thing to talk about is the vibration testing that I've been doing, and that's with, uh, with this 12 volt pack. And I've been loading this into a vibratory tumbler and I'm trying to mimic the effect of vibration that you would have on battery packs um, on e-bikes when they're in use. And the first tests were with the initial kit that I built. And I've also been testing them with the latest update, which I've um, made changes to, to use M3 bolts to secure the two, I don't know, plates, if you want to call them, in place. I've had this pack vibrating for over three days, cumulative time in the tumbler, with no signs of degradation in the connections. The clip that um, I'm showing here is actually after 24 hours of testing, and it's in response to a question that was asked as to whether there were any fluctuations with the lights. So I hooked up one of my 100 watt bike lights to it, and you can see that there. I realize this isn't a perfect testing solution. It's not lab level testing, but it's the best that I can do on the budget that I have right now. And I'm also aware that the frequency of vibrations can be different in the real world. So there could be a resonant frequency problem with this stuff. This is not the be all and end all, but it does give me the confidence to try these in a functional environment. Like I'm confident that the screws are not gonna come undone and these bolts are not gonna come apart based on based on what I've done. I have heard stories about commercial batteries even failing because the bikes they were on were constantly being ridden over cobbles and that set up like a frequency problem uh, with vibrations. After doing the vibration testing, the next thing that I wanted to do was to test the internal resistance of the braid connections. All of the connections are made with um, tinned copper braid, um, which is a quarter of an inch wide. There were some concerns online that that braid would add far too much resistance and would heat up and cause problems with this kit. So in order to calculate it, I have actually removed the BMS units from the batteries and that's taken them out of the equation. And that just leaves me with the, the cell connections with the braid and the, uh, the, the wire outputs. Uh, so this is, um, what I'm using to test the internal resistance. Um, this is with the, the 36 volt pack. So I'm using these load um, resistors, which are 50 watts, 6.6 .6 ohms. So I've got three of those in sequence for the 36 volt pack. And I just used one of them for with the 12 volt pack. And basically I'm passing current through them and I'm measuring the voltage before and I'm measuring the voltage drop and I will show you how I'm doing the, the calculation to figure out the internal resistance of the wiring and the braid based on the known quantity, which is the internal resistance of the cells in the battery. The average internal resistance of the individual battery cells is a known quantity. So by taking that away from the resistance that remains it has to be caused by the connections. With the 12 volt battery, connected to a single 50 watt load resistor rated at 6.6 .6 ohms, the voltage dropped from 12.3 volts to 12.23 volts. So that's a, zero, a 0 0.07 voltage drop in total. This is the, the sag under load that you'll notice on your display with your battery when you're hitting the throttle, for example, on your e-bike. 
A Molly cell P42A has an internal resistance of 15 milliohms. You add them in series and you divide them in parallel. So the battery having three cells in series and three groups in parallel means the internal resistance of the battery cell is 15 times three divided by three, which is 15 milliohms for this pack. So if I use the voltage drop and known ohm value of the resistor, which is 6.6 .6 ohms, we can use a handy dandy online calculator to determine that the total internal resistance of the battery is 38 milliohms. And if we take away the known quantity of the cells, it leaves a resistance of the braid connections and, and the wire coming out here as 23 milliohms. With this 36 volt pack, I hooked it up to three of the load resistors at 6.6 .6 ohms for a total of 19.8. And the voltage dropped from 35.7 volts to 35.3, so 0.4 volts of drop. And again, using the online calculator, it gives a total internal resistance of 224 milliohms. The battery cells in this case are the, uh, the Samsung 30E cells, which have an average internal resistance of 35 milliohms. And I'm using 10 in series and two parallel groups. So 10 times 35 divided by two gives us 175 milliohms in total. 224 minus 175 means that the resistance of the braid and connections comes to 49 milliohms. Like these are not these are not horrible numbers. These are the kinds of numbers that I'm confident to use this pack to say power the CYC photon at about 500 watts. Like this would for sure power something like a Jetson Bolt, even with just like the two parallel groups. Right now, this is without a BMS, so this is something that will add a little bit to the total internal resistance. Um, so I guess this is uh, this is a good time to show you some of the BMS options I'm looking at and how I'll be connecting them to the packs. So BMS, uh, a good battery has a BMS or a battery management system. And that's something that I do want to integrate with these batteries. Uh, the first pack I built um, had a tiny BMS, which is really only intended for small loads. And that's inside here. And with this BMS, the series connections are made over the BMS. So this is a 12 watt BMS and you connect the cell groups. It's a bit like this one. So you connect the cell groups to the, the solder pads on here and then the output and the charging takes place at the end here. Uh, the max rated amps for this one is 10. This one, it says 20. I think they're slightly, slightly overrated possibly. I have uh, another one here as well and this is like a slightly bigger version with uh, a higher number of MOSFETs and it can handle more current. It follows the same method though of adding the series connections via the, the BMS itself. The ones that I'm going to be using to actually start doing some, some testing and work with are from Daily and that's these here. These are not, um, they're not Bluetooth or anything, but they do work with the balance leads um, that people are going to be more familiar with possibly. So this one here, for example, is for the 36 volt pack. And this one here is for uh, quite a larger 12 volt battery that I want to build for powering lighting and a few of the devices for when we go camping. I'm actually experimenting in using grub screws and these modified screws here. Uh, not that one. Uh, yeah, so this one here. So I have a hole in my screw here and then I insert a grub screw in that. And the way it works is that you insert the BMS wire into the side here and then you tighten down the grub screw and then give it, give it a tug test to make sure it's not coming out. And by that method, I'm going to be able to link up all the parallel groups uh, for the different cells. So that's basically where I am with, with BMS integration. Um, and I'm going to be getting that done before I actually put this out and try and test this, test this on a bike. And I'm probably going to do some more internal resistance testing as well. So I can calculate how much the BMS is going to add to this system as well. The next thing to talk about is safety. And there are a few things that I'm considering with regards to safety right now. So I'll, I'll go over those. Every day, it seems there's like a new video on YouTube about battery fires with lithium cells. And there is a huge amount of scaremongering, but it's also a genuine issue that needs to be solved at several levels. 
I think a lot of concerns with batteries can be mitigated simply by making structural changes as to how we store, charge and use these high capacity batteries. The explosion in popularity of micro mobility transport combined with quite a bit of ignorance about storage and use is is genuinely causing problems. I mean, if you look back at history, when petrol or gasoline vehicles started to become popular, there were lots of problems with fires. People were storing highly flammable gasoline in an unsafe way, not venting the vapors in a safe way. They were filling up vehicles using jerry cans in and around their homes. Today, there are still accidents with gasoline. The solutions were to have fueling stations with safe storage facilities. You don't fill your motorcycle up inside your house. The same could be done for lithium ion batteries. We could have safe charging stations that are isolated where people can charge a battery and if there's a fire, the fumes are vented and the combustion contained and extinguished. For this video, I'm gonna be looking at the materials that I'm using to maybe try and make them less combustible. So this one here is made from a self-extinguishing plastic from Prusa. And I have uh, a comparison part here to light on fire now and see how they compare. Beyond this, I want to look at incorporating fire resistant materials into the overall casing, something that in the event of a problem would maybe buy some time, much like how over time fuel tanks in cars became better at not spilling fuel all over the place when a vehicle crashes. There are a lot of things that homeowners, condo owners, businesses and local authorities can do to fix this very real problem without resorting to bans for people. I will continue to explore ideas, and if people have any ideas, they are most welcome to post them. The last part of this video, I want to talk about what I want to do with this system, because I've given it a lot of thought, and I've spent some time talking about it with the original designer, and what I think we'd like to do is to make it open source. This on its own, like just me doing this, like I said, it's not a silver bullet, but I think it could be a vehicle for change and a way to open up a genuine conversation about how we use batteries. But I feel that that's only really gonna be possible if we get as many people contributing as possible. And I'm sure that there are lots of other people that will have ideas and that can make ideas and modifications to this. With open source, you essentially have to agree to feedback and share those changes that you make. And in that way, things can be developed really quite rapidly. Maybe some people out there have access to more testing equipment than me. Like maybe they're more scientific than me and they know electronics better than me. It, if you look at the way the VESC motor speed controllers have benefited from being an open source license, you, you, you can see how the, the power of it can help develop something much more quickly. So I'm gonna learn how to set up one of these GitHub pages as well as putting together some kind of agreement so that people will have to commit to sharing what you do if you use this system and i'm going to put everything on there and we can see how far we take this as a community it's going to take me a little bit of a time to get my head around all of this so if you're familiar with github and you want to help that could be a first stage um please don't start badgering me in, in the comments for files right now because this is going to be it's going to be at my own pace other than that once I'm happy with all this stuff, I am gonna make some kits available for people to buy with BMS units and braid so they can build batteries. I'm gonna start with the 12 volt stuff, maybe do the 36 volt stuff. 
um, and get used to it. And if people want to go higher, then maybe that's something that can be worked on via the open source system. So that's it for this video. Uh, it's quite a bit to think about. I want to thank everybody for watching and huge massive thanks to the channel members who directly contribute to all this. So I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.